This is video number nine now from Digital University. It's a continuation of the previous video, uh, video number eight, where we were talking uh, about elementary matrices and determinants. And another property of determinants is, for example, let's just say this is our matrix A, and it has a determinant, we'll just say determinant A. Well, if we exchange any of the rows or any of the columns for that matter, what happens is it changes the value of the matrix. So here you see we have A11, A12, A13. That's the first row as it was up here, but here the second and the third rows were interchanged. So if this has a value, a numerical value, we'll just call it A, then this would be minus that. Or if we had switched two of the columns, that would also then change the determinant by a negative sign. Now here we have two changes. We continued from this one, only now what we did is we interchanged this row with the first row to get this. So that changes it by a negative sign. So now we have this. Well, now it comes out being positive again. So the general rule, obviously, is if you change the rows or the columns an odd number of times, that's going to change the value of the matrix by negative 1. If you do it an even number of times, then the uh, value of the matrix is unchanged. Now, what about the elementary matrices themselves? What determinants do they have? Let's take a look. For the identity matrix, of course, it's just 1. In fact, you can obtain what it is just by multiplying the diagonals together. And that's easy enough to see um, if we even go ahead and just use our cofactor expansions, because it would be 1 times the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix, which is just 1, 0, 0, 1. Don't know if that's in view very well. So we have 1 times 1 times 1. Now, for this matrix, the elementary matrix, where we interchanged the, fir the first row and the, and the second row to have this, well, now what we're going to have is it's going to be negative 1. Because if we just go look at the top row and go ahead and do our expansions, we have 0. Then we have negative 1 times the sub-determinant, or the 2 by 2 sub-matrix. So we cover up the first row cover up the column, and it's going to be 1 times 1 times negative 1. Now, this particular uh, elementary matrix of type 1, we obtain that by reversing these first two, the first and second column, or first and second row. If you do it with any of the rows like that, it will always come out with a value of negative 1. And here for the type 2 matrix, the type 2 matrix is going to have a value of some constant. We said in the previous video that if you multiply any of the rows by a matrix by a number, it's going to multiply that determinant by a number. So here, this specific um, elementary matrix of type 2, that was obtained by multiplying the third row of the identity matrix by 3, therefore it multiplies the determinant by 3. So this would have a determinant of 3 for the specific uh, example of a type 2 matrix. Interestingly enough, for the type 3 matrices where we multiply, imagine multiplying a row by a constant, in this case 3, and adding it to another row, in this case the first row, so that when you multiply a matrix by this, you get this result. 
Well, go ahead and check the determinant of this, and you find out it's 1. And no matter what type of um, type 3 elementary matrix you have, no matter what number you multiplied a row by and what other row you added it to, it still has a determinant of 1. So for the elementary matrices, their determinants are 1. In this case, it's minus 1 for the elementary matrix of type 1. Here, it's always going to be some constant. And here, for the type 3 matrix, it's plus 1. So those are the determinants of the elementary matrices. Now, we want to use this information. Suppose, for example, we had a matrix that looked like this. And we want to see, can we get it into using the Gaussian technique, can we get it into an upper triangular form by using only elementary 1 type operations and elementary uh, matrix type 3 operations. In other words, we're not going to multiply the rows by any constant. Normally, if we were doing a Gaussian elimination, the first thing we do is multiply this by 1 fourth to make this a 1. But we don't want to do that. We want to just use operations either exchanging rows or multiplying one row by a constant and adding it to another row. So here, of course, what we would do is this is 4, 2, 2, then multiply this by minus 1 half, add to this row. That makes this 0. This will be 2. This is minus 6. Now we want to do then for the second one here to get to make this is 0, is multiply this by minus 3 fourths and add. That makes this 0. This comes out minus 1 half. This comes out 3 halves. Now notice that if we just multiplied through here by um, minus 2, this would be plus 2 and this would be minus 6. We don't want to do that because that's multiplying through by a constant. We want to avoid that. So what we imagine doing is taking this row here and multiplying it by 1 fourth. So this becomes 1 half, add it to there, that's 0. This becomes minus 3 halves, add it to here, this becomes 0. So we look at the matrix of what we have. How do we get to this matrix? Well, we start with matrix A, and then we multiplied this by minus 1 fourth and add it to this row. So in other words, you multiplied it by an E3 uh, type elementary matrix. Then we multiplied it by minus 3 fourths and added to this row to get this. So again, we did another, uh, we multiplied by another E3 type elementary matrix. And same here, Multi divided through by 4 and added. So we took our matrix and multiplied it by 3 elementary matrices to get this upper triangular matrix. Now, we said in the previous video that when you multiply matrices together, the determinant when you multiply two matrices together, that equals the determinant of B times the determinant of C. So the determinant of u will equal the determinant of all of these here, or it would equal the determinant of this one times the determinant of this one times the determinant of this one times the determinant of this one. Well, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1. So this upper triangular matrix, the determinant of this is the same thing as the matrix that we started with. and this determinant is 0, because we have a row that consists of all zeros. If you have a row or a column that consists of all zeros, that's going to give you 0 for the determinant. And we can just see that real quick. Here, if we're going to expand this out by minors, what would we do? We'd have 4, then we'd have to make a 2 by 2 submatrix, cover this up, cover this up, 
and you can see hopefully we have 2 0 minus 6 cross multiply you get zeros minus 2 times the submatrix cover up the row and the column and now we will have this is 0 0 minus 6 0 cross multiply you get 0 cover this up 0 times 0 minus 0 times 2 the whole thing is 0 also remember from our previous videos now we would look at a matrix like this and we would say well if this was say x1 column x2 column x3 column we need a better pen here the x1 column x2 column x3 column we would look at this and we would say well x1 is a lead variable x2 is a lead variable but x3 is a free variable that means then that this type of matrix is going to have an infinite number of solutions or maybe we won't have any solutions if we have an augmented matrix and we have um, a number here another number here if this is zero then we're okay but if this is some number other than zero C3 call it then we're going to have zero times x1 plus zero times x2 plus zero times x3 equals some non-zero number that can't happen so what we're trying to point out here is that this is a singular type of matrix it either has no solution or it has an infinite number of solutions and the reason why it would have an infinite number of solutions as we discussed in the previous videos is because it contains a free variable in this case it happens to be the x3 variable now what happens if we have this type of matrix and again we want to try to get it to upper triangular form using elementary type matrix operation one interchange some rows interchange two rows or E3 multiply one row by a constant add it to another row so here we look at this we would multiply this by minus two and add to make that four or zero and this is what you get in the second row when you multiply this by minus two and add it to this one. Multiply it by minus three, this whole row to make that zero, and this is what you get. Now, notice that when we went through the operation here, one of the diagonal elements came up as zero. And we said in previous videos, if that happens, you're going to get all zeros if you continue the operation. Well, at this point, we can just stop the operation because all we have to do now is interchange these two rows. And there we have an upper triangular matrix. Now, how did we go from our original matrix to get to the upper triangular matrix? We used operation E3 once to get this, and we use it again to get this. So we took our original matrix, multiplied by an E3 type elementary matrix, multiplied it by another E3 type elementary matrix, then we interchanged two rows to get this, that's an elementary matrix type 1 operation. Now here, the determinant of this, well, then that would be equal to the determinant of this one times this times this times this. This is one, this is one, it's negative one so in this case the upper triangular matrix is determinant is negative of what it was for the original matrix that we started with with a larger point that we want to discuss here is that when you have a non singular matrix where these diagonal elements are non zero and in fact if we wanted to we could have continued um, the echelon reduction process and get into a reduced echelon form by now starting to use
E2 type operations where we divide through by constants to start getting ones here then eliminate the numbers above. If we want to we could take it all the way to the identity matrix. Well we can stop right here because we, what we wanted to show is that with non-singular matrices when you start getting into upper triangular form these diagonals here are never zero and therefore the determinant of a non-singular matrix is never zero. You always get a non-zero value. And if we have it in upper triangular form, the determinant is just simply equal to the product of these diagonals. And don't take my word for it. Take a couple of minutes, write this down, use the cofactor expansion method, and you will see that this right here, the determinant of it is plus 60. Simply multiplying these diagonals together, or go ahead, multiply it out um, using the, um, the uh, minor expansion, and you'll see you would get plus 60. What we wanted to, what we wanted to do, uh, stress in this video is that for the square matrices, we have non-singular, which is what we just demonstrated, and for the non-singular ones, let's go back, because the diagonal elements are never zero, that means you never have any free variables. x1, that's a lead variable. x2, that's a lead variable. x3, that's a lead variable. There's no free variables, therefore, there's always going to be a unique solution. So non-singular, no free variables, you're always going to have a unique solution, and the determinant is not zero. For a singular matrix, those free variables start to crop up. You're going to have infinite solutions, and the determinant is always zero. And the reason being is, when you start reducing it to row echelon form, on the diagonals, you're going to start getting zeros, and eventually, one or more of the rows are going to be zero all the way across, and you're going to see free variables starting to crop in. Okay, that's all I want to say in this mate in um, this particular presentation. In the next two videos, we're going to look at more of the properties of non-singular matrices, and specifically how they have an inverse, and what you have to do to be able to determine that inverse. So come back. Join us for those videos, and then that will get us in a position where very shortly we can start solving problems that involve eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So come back, join us for some more videos, and very soon we'll start solving some problems.